Thank you so much once again for joining us for Saturday's edition of Alaska Weather. I'm Dave Percy, a meteorologist with the National Weather Service. First up here, this is a FAA weather cam or webcam shot of the weather at Shishmaref today and clear skies there again today. I think there was yesterday as well, but nothing but sun today, maybe a few higher clouds off in the distance there. And uh, temperatures uh, generally in the 40s there. And the next shot here, this is Wales again with uh, clear skies, only some high thin stuff there, uh, high cirrus. And then looks like off in the distance that might be one of the Diomede Islands. This is a west looking view of Wales. And uh, winds about 20, 10 to 20 miles an hour to the northeast. Temperature near 50 degrees today. It's not, not too bad, uh, a little cool on the breeze there. But uh, actually, except for the location, really not for Wales, it's not too cool. And for Savunga, or this next shot, this is Savunga here. And again, sunshine. So again today, the Czech CC down across uh, the, Seward, or the uh, Bering Strait, Seward Peninsula, and St. Lawrence Island. Another sunny day today, and probably see another one tomorrow. Moving on to fire danger, uh, things have shifted westward here. Now the uh, high fire danger zone here from the Northwest Valleys across the Seward Peninsula and on down into the uh, Yukon Delta here while it improved uh, dramatically from yesterday. We had a pretty good area of extreme fire danger up in the eastern interior here. Uh, that due to the precipitation that fell, uh, Beaver picked up about a third of an inch of rain and some areas, uh, Fort Yukon had a tenth of an inch. And then farther to the east, only a few hundreds recorded, but far back to the west, even heavier amounts as much as three quarters to eight tenths of an inch or so falling in some areas. And so fire danger as a result, a lot lighter. Still a little bit of a high fire danger zone there in the central Copper River Basin there uh, in the valley as it's kind of been here for quite some time. Moving on to satellite imagery, you can see uh, the clouds here with the uh, precipitation extended down across the southwest interior today with uh, Bethel receiving about two-tenths of an inch of uh, precipitation. And then that mostly with uh, the moisture from the interior here slipping off to the southwest. And uh, so uh, quite a few areas picking up measurable rain throughout or during the day today along with cloudy skies, uh, areas of light rain sprinkles over south central Alaska with the uh, clouds and rain over the, uh, along the North Gulf Coast there, about two tenths of an inch worth of Cordova. So nothing uh, really heavy, but the uh, front did bring uh, 1.16 inches of precipitation to Kodiak Island there. And that rain ended uh, earlier today and maybe some clearing starting to show up there. It doesn't look like too widespread, but you may see a little bit of clearing here late this afternoon or at least into early this evening. More clearing though over Bristol Bay, north of the Alaska Peninsula, cloudy to the south, and generally cloudy right along the Aleutians there. It looks like Shimia broke out into sunshine today. And uh, kind of the circulation here, we had rain falling there at St. Paul with this moisture streaming southwestward off the southwest coast there. So an area of rain and showers from the Pribilofs right up into the Kuskokwim Delta. Over the Panhandle, rain uh, increasing this afternoon as uh, this, uh, this frontal boundary slowly edges its way eastward. And again, that's the same weather feature producing rain all along the North Gulf Coast here. And that will continue to do so over the uh, next uh, day or so. And they'll slowly move inland and then just kind of die across the Panhandle. But the next one will roll right in behind it and uh, bring another round of precipitation to the southeast coast. Looks like it could be heavy to moderate, maybe moderate to heavy for the central and southern areas here with the one that comes in on uh, Monday. Otherwise, on the chart today, here's a first front here that's uh, spreading the rain in over the southeast coast. Uh, I believe Sitka picked about 15 hundredths of an inch, so nothing really heavy uh, at this point, uh, but it will be continuous and continuing through the night as that front slowly moves eastward and then stalls out over the area. Same uh, pattern here for the North Gulf Coast, areas of light rain. Thunderstorms uh, confined to uh, 
a couple of strikes here west of the border around Eagle, most of the strikes east of Eagle there in Canada. And uh, that's where the warmest temperatures were today, lower 70s in and around the Fairbanks area, mid, early to mid-afternoon, some cases maybe the mid-70s there. Cooler to the north in spite of the clearing skies, that due to the uh, chillier air that came down actually behind this trough as it moved through. So uh, again, temperatures in the 60s, but not quite what you saw yesterday with some areas seeing the lower 80s. And again, the uh, trough out to the southwest here and moisture kind of feeding along that trough out into all the way to the Pribilofs, actually. And eastern Aleutians, uh, rain, fog at times today, uh, a little bit uh, showery there for the Alaska Peninsula, all due to this low center just south of the area there. A break here ahead of the next front that's off to the southwest, out to the west, northerly flow, and uh, again, clearing skies. For tonight, that pattern really doesn't change a whole lot out there. Maybe see winds gusting possibly as high as 30 miles an hour over the central Aleutians. Otherwise, lighter winds with more areas, of, or that will result in areas, a more widespread area of low clouds and fog, or more fog here due to the light wind conditions. This system here will kind of uh, keep the rain going, or it will keep the rain going from the Fox Islands across the Alaska Peninsula, and then a break there in Bristol Bay. Showers over the southwest mountains. Slow moving front here keeps uh, periods of light rain going along the North Gulf Coast, southern Cook Inlet, southern Kenai Peninsula. Some of that could actually spread northward here again into Turning Arm or continue uh, maybe a little bit uh, heavier than today as this moves up. And the North Gulf Coast, really not much of a change. Better chance of precipitation trying to push into areas of the Copper River Basin, mostly over toward the eastern interior areas there. Especially late tonight, should see an increase over in this area of rainfall on up into the eastern Alaska range. But again, periods of light rain for the Panhandle. That continues through tomorrow. That uh, front just kind of dies out right on top of you. So cloudy, wet conditions through tomorrow. And uh, could see some moderate to heavy showers developing here over the northern Copper River Basin into the uh, upper Tanana Valley, 40 mile country, along with uh, thunderstorms. So we could see some fairly decent amounts of rainfall with that. And uh, showers extend all the way down to the Cal Talkeetnas. And scattered showers of Prince William Sound, Kenai Peninsula. Uh, probably breaking out to some partly sunny conditions for Cook Inlet. Back down toward Kamishak Bay and thunderstorms, a pretty good possibility here over the uh, lower Yukon, Kuskokwim Valley areas, or specifically probably right along the Kuskokwim Mountains, and then also over the eastern interior. Sunshine to the north, a weak trailing edge of that trough right up here could bring some fog and drizzle possibly to the western Arctic coast, otherwise that's about it. With sunshine off to the east over the eastern Boulevard Sea coast and the northern Bering Sea here, Chuck Sea again looks mostly sunny for tomorrow. And then the outlook for Monday, uh, not too bad here. Another possibly sun, sunny day again from the northern Bering with VFR right up into the western interior. Offshore flow keeps it uh, cleared out along the western Arctic coast. Definitely for the northwest coast, Kivalina, Point Hope, right on down into Kotzebue and Ambler, as well as Selawik. Then you start picking up some clouds and uh, some afternoon thunderstorms again possible here over the upper Yukon Valley. And then sunshine off to the east there. There'll be... Uh, Areas of sunshine in the eastern interior here, but uh, look for more clouds and then the isolated thunderstorms developing either side of this trough there, that thermal trough. And the thunderstorm threat extends right down into northeast Bristol Bay once again. Bering Sea, not much change. High pressure out west. Uh, northwest breezes here across the Pribilofs and uh, maybe enough moisture there to kick off a shower or two around on Alaska and Akulski, maybe St. Paul, St. George as well as the Alaska Peninsula. Low off Kodiak keeps it kind of cloudy and unsettled there on the eastern side of the island with the next system as that whole upper level system pushes north, slowly pushes northeast, which is gonna drive another round of, uh, again, could be possibly moderate to heavy rain here into the southern southeast coast, but rain will spread northward to Skagway and probably beyond by the later part of the afternoon. Definitely rain will push into Yakutat and then cut off somewhere around Cordova at this point and then for lows tonight down that way looking in the lower to mid 50s with uh, 45 to 50 ish here for the southeast part of the state uh, lower lower 50s in the central interior cooling into the upper 30s in the brooks range to mid to lower 30s on the arctic coast highs for tomorrow 70s upper yukon valley back to the west seward peninsula uh, into the 70s away from the coastline there with uh, 70 degree weather all the way down the yukon cusquam delta 50 lower 50s 
out over the Bering Sea, including St. Lawrence Island and upper 40s out west. And for the lows the following morning, lower 30s there on the Arctic coast, just a shade below freezing, otherwise 30s to the north slope. South of the mountains, though, uh, lower to mid 50s here from the northeast interior, all the way down to Bethel, forecast low of 52. And 45 to 50 here, south central Alaska, lower 50s for the panhandle. Taking a look at the highs for Monday, really not much change. Another system coming in, cloudy skies uh, with increasing rain. So uh, mid 50s to maybe near 60 up towards Skagway. Otherwise, kind of a re uh, 70s warmest here in the western interior and a shade cooler over the eastern interior, but still not too bad near 70. And now, aviation weather around Alaska. First line weather graphic uh, for Sunday morning. A uh, zone of IFR here from uh, near Atka over to Unmak Island northeast. We're just catching the frivol off. So some marginal VFR up to Nunavak Island. Otherwise, VFR out there to the west and to the north, including the Arctic coast there with marginal VFR from the uh, Western Alaska Range, Cook Inlet, Kenai Peninsula. IFR just grazing the east side of Kodiak Island on up to the uh, southern coast of the Seward Peninsula. And marginal for Prince William Sound, IFR, eastern North Gulf Coast, right on down across most of the panhandle. And for the afternoon, that uh, breaks out to marginal VFR here for the southeast coast. And the IFR retreats southward here, leaving marginal VFR actually will be on the increase here in the afternoon, shifting up to the north and northwest a little bit with a surge of moisture. So Wrangell Mountains into at least the central Copper River Basin, southern Kenai Peninsula, and uh, more IFR now, a little farther westward there across Kodiak and marginal for the Alaska Peninsula. Bristol Bay, VFR, at least to start. Uh, late in the afternoon, you could start seeing some marginal stuff show up with the, uh, associated with the convection developing. Otherwise, good VFR in the interior with uh, marginal central western Arctic coast and uh, still some IFR here over the uh, southeast Bering Sea to the eastern and central Aleutians. And that kind of uh, expands Monday morning there, including uh, both Adak and Atka, almost as far west as Amchitka. Definitely for the Pervilofs IFR and on down to the Fox Islands. VFR there along the southwest coast. And Nevada Island starting the day out Monday, VFR. And St. Lawrence Island as well as the northern Bering. Interior VFR north of the Brooks Range. Hit the marginal and then IFR for the Arctic coast. IFR for much of the Gulf of Alaska. Not quite into Prince William Sound and then southwest through to Kodiak and a lot of IFR here. Uh, good southwest flow, moisture, that upper low starting to track northeastward now. So IFR the entire day. And for uh, actually in the af to start the day in the afternoon might break out a little bit here, but still not much. Still IFR mostly across the panhandle. And marginal VFR uh, for the uh, northeast Pacific here, Gulf of Alaska. And a little bit of IFR left over the uh, coast range here, eastern North Gulf Coast and marginal VFR Copper River Basin. Improving slowly here over south central Alaska, still some marginal VFR into the late afternoon hours, but VFR to the north and then marginal VFR central eastern Arctic coast, IFR here, central Aleutian, south central Bering Sea. And for passes, Anatovic uh, VFR, another VFR day also for Adigan tomorrow and Lake Clark and Merrill. Looking pretty good with uh, starting out marginal becoming VFR into the afternoon there, but uh, just kind of the opposite for rainy. It looks like uh, starting out uh, VFR uh, with clouds and showers around, but that might trend in toward marginal VFR in the afternoon. Looks like some moisture increasing with the uh, convection and definitely for windy, uh, starting out VFR becoming marginal VFR, even possibly IFR there as convection increases. And Isabel, same pattern, VFR becoming marginal, risk of thunderstorms, Mintasta, Marginal to start with, and then a good slug of moisture coming up from the south and southeast. Uh, looks like uh, becoming IFR it, throughout the afternoon. And Tanita, VFR becoming marginal VFR in the afternoon with Portage. Call it marginal the entire day. Possible IFR maybe on the eastern entrance, but uh, looks marginal at this point. Chilkoot and White, IFR. Freezing levels here, about 8,000 feet over the central interior areas, falling back about only 6,000 feet now on the extreme eastern Arctic coast. That cold pool of air starting to pull off to the east, and uh, otherwise a little cooler here over the Gulf of Alaska and southern uh, Kenai Peninsula, Cook Inlet, Bristol Bay, but only about 6,000 feet and uh, 6 to 8,000 over the Bering Sea. 
And for the icing threat, uh, this area here lifting slowly north and northwest coming into the Kodiak Island, southern Kodiak Island late in the afternoon. A little sooner there for the Alaska Peninsula, but only just uh, areas of light rime icing with that. And then a little heavier stuff here with that moisture sliding up to the northwest here, kind of interacting with that boundary here over the Copper River Basin, eastern Alaska range. Could see some areas of considerable moderate there anywhere in this zone right on down the southeast coast. And for the jet stream, big upper level low here, stationary for about another 24 hours. It'll track northeastward there and uh, definitely keep it wet over the panhandle. 9,000 feet, 20 to 25 knot winds for the southeast coast. And northerly is up to 45 knots into the central Aleutians, a little lighter at 3,000 feet. Turbulence wise, occasional light to isolate moderate chop here for the central Aleutians due to those winds. Space weather affects technologies. As conditions develop, we put out alerts, warnings, and watches to our customers so they can take action. The Space Weather Prediction Center has had a long-standing relationship with the power industry, so they've been aware that solar storms, the geomagnetic storm piece of that, can affect the operation of their systems and induce extra currents and loads on those systems that can either trip those systems offline or, or in the worst of cases, cause damage. That relationship goes back for several decades, in fact. A big incident in 1989 where part of Quebec was tripped offline that affected something like six million customers for about nine hours. I think that really raised the awareness in the power industries. When we get the alert, we watch the grid and start looking for issues. Are we seeing a decline in voltage? Are we seeing equipment failures? And we readjust the system to try to mitigate those problems, try to keep the lights on and keep it from going out. So we're averaging about 500, 550 kilometers per second. If we didn't have this early warning, we wouldn't see it until our sensor saw it getting more information quicker and faster before the storm hits, not during the storm, is a big improvement. In the long term, I think what we need and what we're moving toward the U.S. as a whole is better modeling, fully understanding this phenomenon, understanding how it would impact specific systems. Rather than actually experiencing a storm, we can simulate storms in our software and see what the impact is. We try to get ahead of it. We always plan that if there's an outage, how can we keep the lights on? What's the best process to prevent it? In the end, five, ten years from now, there's going to be a whole mix of operational procedures driven by what we do on prediction and warning. And then there also will probably be some level of hardware controls to ensure the reliability of the grid. Space weather affects technologies. As conditions develop, we put out alerts, warnings, and watches to our customers so they can take action. There's different types of impacts on communication systems. And the HF, we call the high frequency, which is that band of communications, 3 to 30 megahertz. But it's a very important band of radio communication because it's used widespread. It's used, for example, by the airlines. HF radio is most commonly used for position reporting when you're going across the ocean airspace, which is devoid of, of radar. And, and ATC can't see you, so you're, it's up to you to report your position and your altitude and your speed. HF works great most of the time, except during a big flare. And during a big flare, that HF communication capability could be gone within a minute or two. So as soon as we see something happening in there, or we see a flare, it's one of the first things we do is alert the aviation community, hey, big flare, HF's gonna be impacted. Once we know that there's an event going on, 
then the aviation industry and the airlines can react to that. They can alter their routes over the poles. They can lower the altitudes that they're flying at, or maybe decide not to fly at all in the interest of their passenger safety. So that's just one example of how EHF is used, but the emergency response community will use it a lot too. It's one of their primary backups. When you've lost connectivity between certain government agencies, it gives you that long-range coverage to talk from out of state to federal governments or from the FEMA locations to the state uh, emergency operations centers. So if you've got a big hurricane impact in the coastline, whatever big city, uh, we've got the cell towers down and whatnot, we've got emergency communication folks in there. Those folks are very familiar with space weather and how it impacts their systems. Here in recent years, it was used during Katrina when we had a lot of communications outages down there. It was also used during Hurricane Ike. There was an outage of the telephone circuits with the Texas State Emergency Office, so it was used in both of those situations. So when we talk about backup, especially for the airlines, typically they'll have SATCOM, so it'll be satellite communication. The satellite technology that emergency responders use could be GPSs, could be satellite phones, satellite data terminals. Space weather events can impact SATCOMs. The impact can range from a nuisance to loss of a spacecraft. So we will give them the heads up. If we have space weather events, flares, whatnot, they need to know what's impacting their systems. Situational awareness is key. Time is of essence to these folks. Again, it's life and death. And now, marine weather around Alaska. Welcome back. Looking at today's sea ice and it doesn't look too much different from yesterday's. Uh, still have this area of ice kind of extending down from the main pack out there. Otherwise, really not much change out here. And then the open area here uh, may actually be a little bit closer, or a little bit farther south, and continued northerly winds out in this area for the next several days means it'll probably it probably will continue a slow southward progression. Moving on to uh, coastal waters here for the southeast coast. Southeast winds, 20 knots tomorrow uh, all along the coast. Seas 7 feet. South 20 for Clarence Strait with 4-foot seas. Stevens Passage, south winds at 15. Seas 3 feet and about 20 knots there for Lynn Canal from the south. No change uh, for Lynn Canal on Monday. Still southerly winds, 20 knots. Seas 4 feet in the afternoon and southeast 15 for Stevens Passage. Southeast 20, Clarence Strait. South 20 on the south coast here, uh, then southwest 15, central coast, and then swinging around to the south, and then southeast at about 20 for the north coast, sea 7 feet. For uh, Cook Inlet here, north of the Forelands tomorrow, northeast at 15, south of the Forelands, a light southwest breeze, and northeast 15 for Kamishak Bay, with east winds of 20 knots for the Barren Islands, northeast 15 for the western north Gulf Coast, and the eastern north Gulf Coast, a little bit more wind uh, east of 20 with seas at 6 feet and east of 15, 3 foot seas for Prince William Sound. For Monday, north 15 there for Prince William Sound and east to northeast winds here for the North Gulf Coast. Holding at 20 knots, seas 7 feet, keeping it under small craft advisory levels, but not the case there for the Barren Islands. Small craft advisories with those 25 knot northeast winds. Southwest 15, Kamishak Bay, and south to southwest at about 10 knots for all of Cook Inlet with uh, pretty slight seas running 2 to maybe 3 feet. Bristol Bay, light northeast winds tomorrow at 10 knots. Uh, a little bit higher here as you head down the peninsula on the Bering Sea side. Actually, the uh, Alaska Peninsula, northeast 20 seas, uh, 4 to 7 feet, and small craft advisories from Castle Cape to Sitkanak, 25 knot northeast winds become even a little stronger. Northeast 30 knots there along the east side of Kodiak and Chillicoff Strait, small craft advisories, northeast 25. Those fall back to about 20 knots on Monday and winds turn more northerly but still hold it about or come down a shade there to 25 knots on the east side of Kodiak with 8 foot seas. Northwest 20 here over to uh, Sitkanak to Castle Cape, Alaska Peninsula. Monday's forecast west winds 15 knots, seas 4 to 6 feet. Light west breeze there for Bristol Bay with seas just 1 foot. 
And for the Fox Islands, uh, northeast 15 to 20 knots or north-northeast at about 15 to 20. Adak and Atka, north to northwest at 25 knots with seas there running uh, about six feet or so. And then 30 knot winds with eight foot seas here uh, west of Adak to about Kiska Island, then back down to 25 from the northwest over towards Humiana too. Uh, much lighter winds in store for Monday, though. Northwest 15 for the western zones here. Adak and Atka west to north are variable at 15. And with uh, Fox Islands looking uh, west-northwest, 15 to 20 knots, and seas running around 5 feet. For the southwest coast, Sunday, north winds 15, north of Nunavak Island, south of the island there, northeast at 15, all the way down to the Pribilofs, northeast 20. For both St. Matthew and St. Lawrence Islands with Norton Sound looking at winds from the north at around 15 knots with three foot seas. That, cha that holds uh, stationary status quo there for Norton Sound. It comes down or increases to 30 knots here for St. Lawrence Island and then northwest 20 here along the southwest coast of those seas running uh, four to five feet. Northwest 20, St. Matthew Island to uh, the Pribilofs with seas at four feet. <clears throat> And for the area from Wales up to Cape Thompson, look for north winds tomorrow at 20 knots with four foot seas. Cape Thompson to Cape Beaufort, northwest 15. Light winds here for the west side, west northwest at about 10 to the central coast. And then east uh, up to 15, or west up to 15 on the eastern coast there. And then dropping off to 10 knots toward demarcation point. And then for Monday, those uh, swing around to the northeast, a little more uniform here on the east side now at about 15 knots with uh, three foot seas. Lighter winds from the northeast on the central coast with two-foot seas. And then east 20 on the west side there, especially from Point, or Point Lay on down to uh, Cape Beaufort. And then you pick up the uh, small craft advisors with northeast winds at 25 knots, turning north all the way down to Wales, again at 25 knots. And for tonight, again, a lot of clear skies here over the northern interior, or mostly clear, right out into the northern Bering Sea, St. Lawrence Island area. And that's all I've got time for. These forecasts are for planning purposes only. Call 1-800-WX-BRIEF for a formal pre-flight briefing. Always file a flight plan before you go flying. The U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary urges you to leave a float plan with a friend or the harbor master before you go boating.